So if I had something like x squared plus 6x plus 9, we say that this is a perfect square because it can be factored as x plus 3 quantity squared. And that works because when I take x plus 3 and multiply it by itself, I'll get x squared plus 3x plus another 3x plus 3 squared. So when we are trying to complete the square, we're using this idea kind of in reverse. So if I had something that looked like x squared minus 8x plus 5, well, that is not a perfect square, but I'd like it to be. That's the idea of completing the square. So if I would like this to be a perfect square, I'm kind of going to scoot that 5 off to the side for a second and look at that x squared minus 8x and imagine that there's something I could put in here that would make this factor in that same way where we've got one thing multiplied by itself. So the trick here is to recognize that the way this multiplies out Whatever is in here with the x, we're always going to end up with two of them, which means that negative 8x represents two of something, or it has to represent an x minus 4 times an x minus 4, so that when I multiply these out, I'd have x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus negative 4 times negative 4 is going to give me 16. So when we complete the square, we're always taking half of that coefficient in front of the x and then squaring it to get what we're adding back in, in this case, 16. In order to not change the problem, we end up adding that 16 in and subtracting it off so that what we added amounts to zero. So if this were my original starting point, then after completing the square, this would look like x minus 4 squared. So that 16 got used up in this part, but the negative 16 didn't. So negative 16 plus 5 should give me negative 11. So that is equivalent to what we started with, but having completed the square. OK, now on to the actual problem in the textbook. What makes problem 16 messier is that the equation starts off for us as 3x squared plus 3y squared plus 3z squared. Just like if we were having to find the center and radius of a circle, if I'm finding the center and radius of a sphere, I'm going to end up completing the square multiple times, once for each variable. So my starting point here is to say I have to get rid of these threes. They're actually going to prevent us from completing the square, or we're going to end up dealing with a square root of three. Doesn't sound good to me. So I'm going to start by dividing both sides of the equation by three. So now I've got x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And I know this leaves us with a fraction of 10 thirds, but it's definitely better than dealing with the square root of 3. And 12z over 3 is going to give me 4z. Now I want to group the pieces together, meaning I'm going to move that 2y over here and I'm going to move that 4z over here so that I've got x squared plus y squared minus 2y, and I'm just going to give myself a little bit of space here, plus z squared minus 4y, again leaving a little space, is equal to 10 thirds. Well, that x squared term, because we don't have any other x's, that means we're sort of done with that, and thank you for catching my mistake, how about a 4z? Okay, so <laughs> We are sort of already done with that x term. We could write that as x minus 0, whole thing squared. 
Moving on to my y's, if I take half of the negative 2, I'll have negative 1. Squaring that would be a positive 1. So I would be adding in a 1 and subtracting off a 1 so that I'm not changing the problem, which means that those y terms I can group together as a y minus 1 whole thing squared. That's using up the plus 1, but I've still got that minus 1. Now over here for my z's, half of negative 4 is negative 2. And if we square that, that's going to be a plus 4. And then I'll also subtract off of 4 so that I'm not changing the problem. That will get grouped together as z minus 2, whole thing squared, and then minus a 4. So we can actually already see where the center of the circle is. So my center, I mean sphere, is going to be at 0, 1, 2. But for our radius, we need to collect all of the numbers over to the right hand side and then take the square root. So I've got a 1 and a 4. That's a minus 5, but adding that over here would be plus 5. So I've got 10 over 3 plus 5 is equal to r squared, which means r is the square root of that. You could simplify it, but I'm not going to worry about it. And we've been asked to find the center and radius for this sphere. So if I break this apart and I first look at those x pieces, then what we're trying to do with completing the square is to make this look like x minus some number squared plus some other number. Um, in case anybody really loves equations, if we think about this as like x squared plus bx plus c, sort of like our standard form for a quadratic, but I've let a be equal to 1 in this case, then this, when we complete the square, is going to factor as x plus b over 2 squared plus c minus b over 2 quantity squared. So whenever we're completing the square for something that looks like this, we end up taking half of the coefficient on the x term, or half of our b. So 8 over 2 would give me 4. So I'm going to have x plus 4. Then I know that in order to make this work out, if I had multiplied this out, I would get x squared plus 8x plus 16. But I didn't have that 16 to start with. So essentially, by writing this in this way, I've added an invisible 16. And I now need to subtract it back off. And that's where this minus b over 2 quantity squared piece comes into. So I'm going to subtract off 16. If I do the same thing with our y terms, then here it's a little bit messy because we've got fractions. But y squared minus 3y, I'm going to take half of that negative 3. So I'll end up with y plus negative 3 over 2, whole thing squared. And then I'm going to end up subtracting off negative 3 over 2 squared. So if I square negative 3 over 2, I'll get positive 9 over 4. So I'm subtracting off 9 over 4. Doing the same thing with my z components here. I'm looking at half of 2. It's going to give me a positive 1. So I've got z plus 1. But when I multiply this out, I'd end up with a 1 squared. And I need to subtract that off. So minus a 1. And in this case, I had that whole thing equal to 3. 
Well, we can now pull off our center. So our center is going to be at negative 4, positive 3 halves, negative 1. So negative 4, 3 halves, 1 for our center. And for the radius, I'm going to skip straight to the radius is the square root of whatever ends up on the right hand side when I fix the numbers. So I've got 3, I'm going to add 16 to that, so I'll be at 19, and then add 9 fourths. I'm going to be lazy and just call that 19 plus 9 fourths. 